All right, he is the most followed chief marketing officer on Twitter and listed as one of the top 20 social media power influencers by Forbes magazine. Ted Rubin is in Sydney today where he's just addressed the 2013 ADMA forum. He's with Sky News business reporter Nigel Freitas. Let's take you there live now. Nigel? Yeah, good afternoon to you, Ingrid, and welcome to the ADMA Forum for 2013. One of the big topics is, of course, social media, and who better to answer our questions on how business should be using that than Ted Rubin. He's, as you said, the most followed CMO on Twitter, but he's a CMO with a difference. He calls himself a social marketing officer. Ted, welcome to the program and to Australia as well. Good well, to see you here. Happy to be here. What is a, a social marketing officer and how is it different from a regular CMO? Well, what I've decided and I've seen happening is that I think that um, every company has to think about wrapping a social shell around everything they do, uh, around all their marketing, around all their advertising, around their production, around their employees. And I, I just did not want to be totally structured in the regular chief marketing position where all you're looking at is traditional marketing. And I felt it was important to make social the center of what you're doing instead of just one piece of it or one silo. Isn't social just another channel? You know, that's not the way I look at it. I think when you look at it as just another channel, you're making a critical error. Social is something that wraps around everything we're doing. You can make everything more... Uh, you can get more exposure from everything you do by wrapping a social shell around it. And that goes to finding vendors, to working on production, to getting to know and working with and getting the most out of your employees. So we're in the middle of reporting season here in Australia, companies reporting their results. I hear a lot about uh, revenue, I hear a lot about cost control, I hear a lot about uh, important assets, for example, on the balance sheet. I hear nothing about social. No one has ever told me you can make money for social, it's a valuable thing to our business. Isn't this just fluff Ted? Well, you know, I think that's what's happening here in Australia because a lot of it hasn't caught on yet. And that was the conversation that was going on in the United States for a long time. Um, it's really shifting now. Companies are starting to understand that um, social media does lead to sales, that content is important, that content has become the ad, and no better way to spread and share content than via social media. And if you look at it correctly, you understand that social media builds trust and builds loyalty. And there's no better way to increase your company business than with trust and loyalty. Think about it. What's most important to a company? The lifetime value of a customer, the average order value, how much they're ordering every time they do it, and the frequency of purchase. How often are they working with you? That's not new though. That's all basic CRM. In fact, we had uh, Dr. Nicola Millard, who's here at the forum, mm -hmm. and she came on our show earlier this week and said, most people are still using those traditional channels first, and they're using social media as secondary channels. So it's important still to invest in those more traditional avenues. I agree 100%. I mean, I'm not here saying that social is the only thing. I'm saying use social to make everything else you're doing stronger. So if you buy TV time, buy, buy, buy newspaper ads. I mean, newspapers disappearing, so you're not going to be able to buy those ads much longer. And if you look around, you'll see most of them still in the plastic wrappers, um, it, it, you know, being put outside in front of the house. Um, but radio time, TV time, traditional advertising, events, um, things that involve people are all important. But if you allow people to share them, if you give people the ability to talk about it with their friends, it's going to make it much more valuable and it's going to build much more awareness for what you're doing. Now you talk about uh, this idea of looking people in the eye digitally and you talk about it in this book you've written called Return on Relationships. Yes. Um, again, is that just taking CRM concepts and porting them into a social world? You know, this is not rocket science. And what we're talking about is common sense, but what I've found is that common sense isn't that common. Now, I like to tell people that the, the I'm going to give you a tip here. The best social media book ever written. No, nope, it's not my book. It was written in 1936, if that gives you a clue. It's called How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. So yes, this is basic strategy, but what I see happening is people are becoming less social on social platforms. We've got to make social platforms social. Don't just click a button and call it a friend. Facebook has done a remarkable thing. They own the word friend, and they've taken away the value. They've made us think and made us believe that by clicking a button or clicking a like button or saying you're a friend, that it really is a friend. No, you've got to look people in the eye digitally, and how do you do that? You look at their profile, you see what their name is, you call them by name. You find out what's important to them and that's what you talk about. Yes, this is not new information. The problem is it's being forgotten and it's not being used in the social space. Ted, thanks for your time today. My pleasure.
So Ingrid, there you have it, making social media a little bit more human. That's a message from Ted Rubin here at the ADMA Forum for 2013. Back to you for now. Nigel, thanks very much for that. That's Nigel Freitas.